Welcome to Striking Option, the show that reveals the options you have to better navigate markets. I'm Jeff Kilberg and I'm joined today by Scott Bauer. Hey there, Scott. Jeff, how you doing? Well, I'm staying warm in Chicago. That's the main point here. But this week, really interesting week, a deluge of data, certainly in the heart of earnings season, but I'm wanting to know and viewers want to know, what's your focus this week? Well, like you just said, earnings are big time this week, but we also have the Fed coming out. We'll see what kind of you know rhetoric they have. And then the lingering issue of the China tariff problem, what is going on there? I think you bring up a great point when we talk about Chairman Powell, the Federal Reserve, that flexibility that they inserted in late December has really turned around markets. So it will be interesting to see if they have any follow through on the flexible policy, agreed? No question about it. All right, well, let's get into this first line here on. You ready, pal? Absolutely. Trade tariffs resolve. Well, you hit the nail on the head talking about these tariffs. It certainly has been the uncertain component of the market. Every asset class continues to look to see if we have a resolution as we see the Chinese delegation here in D.C. this week. Yeah, you know, all eyes are going to be focused on that. And I'm looking at an example of trying to capture a potential move higher in the E-mini S&P 500 if indeed we see a trade tariff resolution. And a way to potentially express this view is by buying a call spread in the E-mini. So what I'm looking to do, Jeff, is buying the week two 2680 2720 call spread in the E-mini S&P 500, which expires on Friday, February 8th. So I'm buying the 2680 week two call for approximately 14 ticks, and I want to sell the 2720 week two call, collect about four and a half ticks. Overall, the spread's going to cost an investor about $480 or so, or just a little under 10 ticks. Now, the March E-mini S&P 500 is the underlying here, and when we evaluated this trade, the futures were trading at about 26.42, with the at-the-money volatility trading just a bit over 18. No, this makes a lot of sense. I like this trade example, Scott. Certainly, we have seen every forward guidance of every S&P 500 company, or at least the majority of them, have come out talking about the uncertainty related to these trade tariffs. So we have some type of resolution. I think the markets will rejoice, and you will see enthusiasm. So I like the way you're defining what you're paying for this option on future situation, which allows you to participate in the event we get something sooner than later. It, exactly. And the key here is, is like you said, it's defined risk. We know what the investment is here, and then we go from there. Great stuff, Scott. And please remember, these are trade examples, not trade recommendations. Let's move into the second lightning round. All right, let's do it. Gold rush. Well, we certainly have seen a flight to quality, a lot of buyers of gold. We've seen gold vault back above $1,300, as we've seen this Fed policy, this Fed flexibility policy, come back into the market. You know, we, we've seen it a, a, take a long time, actually, for that rally for gold to get above 1300 here. The question is, has it maybe gotten a little bit too ahead of itself? No, I think that's a great, great point you bring up, and that's why we want to utilize options on futures. So the opportunity and the trade example I want to utilize after a long run and a vault above 1300 I want to be a seller of a call spread. I want to sell that week two 1325 call, and I want to buy that same expiration, that week two call, but that 1350 level. So it's a $25 wide call spread. It's going to allow me to collect about $350. This trade expires on February 8th and the April contract is underlined. Remember when this trade example was priced out, the gold futures were trading at $13.16 in that April contract and the at the money vol was around $10. Yeah, you know, Jeff, I really like this. A, your risk defined to the upside here, and B, you know, gold has rallied as the dollar has weakened. We'll see what happens moving forward here. Well, I think that's a point. I want to put a little finer point on. We haven't seen gold. We haven't seen that frenzy of gold buying. We've seen that slow grind up. Therefore, I want to look at the chart for that back and fill, Scott. Maybe we go back and test that 1285 after we go visit that 1320 level. Exactly. And, and once again, you're completely risk defined just in case gold keeps going up, up, up. Well, thanks, Scott, as always, for coming on to Striking Options. We want to thank you for tuning in to Striking Options. Please tune in every week as we will continue to strike options.